billions of times a year, uh, a patient interacts with a caregiver, a provider, uh, of, could be a physician, but there's only nine million physicians in a world of, uh, of uh, seven billion people. So a lot of healthcare is provided not by physicians, but by health workers of various levels of training. A staggering $8 trillion was spent uh, globally on healthcare, $8 trillion. That's about four or five times the combined defense spending of every country uh, on the planet. 25% of which was spent uh, by lower and, or in lower and middle income countries. And $30 billion a year, which only in comparison to the previous numbers sounds small, but is a huge number, is spent on aid. And yet at the heart of this expensive system, touching so many lives, is a dysfunction. People overseeing all of the health care and people spending all of that money are doing so with very little data to tell them how well the money is spent and the kind of care that is actually delivered. This is because of a disconnect. 95% of all healthcare encounters where a patient sees somebody in the healthcare system is outside or below the level of a hospital in clinics and health posts. Even in the United States, it's no less than 85% of all health care happens outside of hospitals. But 95% of all health care data that we have comes from inside of uh, sophisticated health care centers, which are hardly representative of where care is delivered. So the result is a mind-boggling fact that trillions of dollars are spent and no one knows exactly how or how well that money is spent. And millions of health workers are very, very busy, but nobody can say exactly what they're doing. How could that be? What is going on in decentralized health centers uh, or uh, clinics and so on that no data is collected? And in order to answer that question, uh, imagine a, a busy, modest clinic where you'll see hundreds of patients waiting to see only several health workers whose supervisors are somewhere else because after all, that's the definition of decentralized uh, health care. And, and now a health worker uh, has just seen patient 22 and patient 23 is waiting. And at this moment, there is a data dilemma. Does the health worker stop and record everything she did? And I'm using she because most health, most health workers are she. My, my wife is also a physician, so in her honor, she's my favorite physician, uh, I'll use she. She will either stop and pause and record the amazing information that just transpired between an ordinary healthcare interview. I myself, uh, I'm, a, I'm a surgeon. I've talked to lots of patients. In a routine conversation, there's information gold, so to speak, for the system. If the health worker doesn't record what just happened with patient 22 and goes on to see patient 23, at that moment, that information is lost to the system forever. However, capturing that information is an incremental activity. And the health worker is very busy. They're not really there to collect data. And in a way, the system is so arranged that delivering care is in competition with data capture. And if delivering care is in competition with the data capture, delivering care always does win and should win. And the health worker goes on to see patient 23, and that data is gone. What if instead of arranging a system where care competes with data, we, and instead of asking the health worker to do something extra for us in the system, namely capture data, we instead gave the health worker some technology that allowed them to do what they do even better, and actually in a more enjoyable way, and, it, and, and in a way that teaches them so that they could have 
the pleasure of learning almost with every patient. What if we put such a technology into their hands, but arranged it in such a way that as they use it, as they touch the touch screen to navigate through the patient interview, data capture happens automatically. And the result of using this technology by the health worker improves the quality of care. It, it, it's an expert in a box, and it's also a, a small lab in a box. The data is encrypted, compressed into less than 100 kilobytes, can therefore be uploaded using uh, any cell network, however primitive, to a cloud from which the remote supervisor of these health workers, and let's say it's a supervisor in charge of 100 clinics, or 1,000, can pop open their, their tablet computer or their, their laptop, can be sitting in a conference halfway around the world, and it is as if they are hovering over every patient and every interaction and every health worker in all of their clinics via real-time dashboards uh, that they can configure and also their own reporting to public health or maybe to the logistics people in, 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 the, in the clinic collection uh, or their funders um, could also have dashboards and the system automatically anonymizes the data uh, as it should be. Uh, and so that's what you, you see with the, um, the device, uh, with the intelligent devices in the hands of the health workers and then uh, what we call an insight portal uh, for st stakeholders of any kind uh, elsewhere. One of the devices you saw, and I'll just take a minute, is a device that can also read rapid diagnostic tests. These uh, are these little tests. 800 million of these were sold last year by about 50 companies. We don't make this. Uh, these allow you to read tests uh, on the spot, and the device takes even this chore off the hands of the health worker. Uh, otherwise, the software works just as well on um, uh, on tablets and, and smartphones. The system also automatically integrates with other diagnostic devices at the point of care, so the data from them is also captured, linked in, and, uh, and further integrated with whatever the information system that the enterprise or clinic chain uh, has. So that the system is fundamentally this. Data is captured from the last mile where the majority of people are. That's hard unless you integrate it into care delivery processes. Extraction of insights is actually not that hard. What's really valuable is then immediately to play those insights back into care delivery processes. And that's where you increase the quality of healthcare and significantly uh, reduce the waste. Here's some results. Um, on figure two, because of time, I'm just going to skip to figure two. Uh, health worker errors reading, doing these diagnostic tests are typically, we found and recorded and documented, anywhere between 25 and 30 percent. Within five weeks, that falls tenfold. Managers can see which uh, health workers are making what errors and also use the system to intercede, even though the system actually automatically corrects and trains health workers. Because a correct diagnosis is made doesn't automatically follow that then the correct treatment is made. Figure one shows 11 clinics. Uh, for all those clinics, the manager pulled all the positive cases, 100% confirmed that these patients have a positive diagnosis. Red means they got the wrong drug. You can see clinic two did it in about half the cases. Clinic 11 on the right may be a little mistake. Same clinics, now flip all of the cases that are 100% negative, proven negative. You can see clinic 11 is actually providing a lot of drugs to people who don't need it. In sub-Saharan Africa, for malaria alone, a billion dollars a year is spent on anti-malarials for patients who don't have malaria. Um, the system, since it's reading tests, can also track the manufacturing quality of tests, can track the drugs. It's all integrated with Google Earth and Google Maps. Uh, on the bottom right-hand corner, the red dots represent anything the manager wants it to represent. Where are all the devices at this moment? Where are patients who are five years old whose mother had HIV when they were born? 
Uh, if the device walks across the street, the system will pick it up. Top left-hand corner is a heat map that was used uh, in Colombia where they located pools of water with, that were infested with mosquitoes during a dengue outbreak. They were able to localize it to a certain apartment building and, uh, and spray. In summary, 10 times reduction of errors, 20-fold improvement in epidemiologic accuracy, tenfold improvement in compliance. These sound like magic numbers, but all this means is if you give people feedback immediately on the spot, their performance improves. The, the, just as important as creating a technology is actually how to deliver it. The word sustainability comes to mind. Um, in 2012, cell phone network operators in aggregate had $1 trillion in revenue in that year, and it's continued to grow. In Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, people paid $75 billion last year to talk and text on the phone. Healthcare companies need to be aware of this and change the model. It's a remarkable model, and it's a remarkable model that can also be used to deliver healthcare, so that's what we do. The technology that I described, it's actually a, a solution when you add the business model to it, um, it was developed in Canada, but we are focused on developing and emerging economies for uh, many reasons. And you can see by the red dots where we are initially focused. As well as that, we uh, are also working with uh, uh, larger groups like uh, we've worked with the Gates Foundation in the Ebola crisis, also the U.S. Department of Defense Medical Command. And in time, we will introduce it into uh, North America and Europe. But our focus initially and forever will always be uh, um, developing and emerging economies because healthcare systems are now being constructed and there's no need to replicate the systems in Europe and North America that need to be changed significantly anyway. Thank you.